Welcome back to part two of the Etsy Seller Spreadsheet video tutorial series. My name is Janet with Paper and Spark and um, if you didn't join us for part one we walked through a little bit of an overview of how to use the Etsy Seller Spreadsheet and how to import your Etsy order CSV from Etsy uh, into the spreadsheet to automatically generate some important amounts on these light blue lines. If you're looking for the Etsy seller spreadsheet, it's for sale at paperandspark.com and also in my Etsy shop, Paper and Spark. So now let's discuss how to go about entering your expenses on these pink, yellow, and purple tabs down here. First, I want to note that for all your expenses, you should enter them as positive amounts. The spreadsheet already knows that they're expenses and they're going to subtract them from your revenue for you. So don't enter anything as a negative here unless for some reason you have a refunded expense that you want to enter. Okay, so when we get started looking at these expenses, we first got some selling expenses, and these are going to come from a few different places uh, that aren't necessarily you just pulling your receipts and typing items in. Some of these we're going to need to pull from other sources like Etsy or PayPal. So let's first talk about where to get the information that goes on this lime green Etsy listing and transaction fee line. I'm going to take a look at my other Etsy shop to get uh, get you an example. So you're going to log into your Etsy account and then go to finances and go to your bill. Now I'm going to go to view all statements unless I happen to be looking at one of these months. You can go to view all statements to look at any month and um, let's do January 2015. So you click January 2015 and you're going to see this summary of this month's activity box. This is what we're looking for here. Okay, so remember we're looking for our Etsy listing and transaction fees and that's exactly what this little box is going to tell me. I'm going to total up um, all, all the amounts ranging from listing fees down to my renew sold fees. Okay, so some of them are zero and some of them aren't. So I'm going to total the ones that I have in this category. So in order to do that, I'm just going to have to type a simple formula. All formulas in Excel are going to begin with an equal sign. Okay, so I just click on the cell that I want to enter this amount in. I'm going to press the equal sign button on my keyboard and then I'm going to add these numbers together. So I've got $6.94 of transaction fees plus $3.20 of renew fees plus $4 of renew expired fees plus 80 cents of renew sold fees. Okay, and your amounts are obviously going to be different. You might have amounts in some that I don't. You might have zero where I have some amounts. You're going to type in the, the amounts that you need to type in and then click enter. So I had $14.94 for Etsy listing and transaction fees in the month of January. Okay, now taking a look at this box, uh, we have some other amounts here. Search ad fees, promoted listing fees, and shipping labels. Now if you have amounts in search ad fees or promoted listing fees, these are going to be advertising expenses for you. While you're here, you can go ahead and click on your advertising tab and you can enter those amounts um, as a monthly expense here. You might not have an exact date to enter it on, but all that really matters is that you assign it to January 2015. So you can date it 131, you can date it 115, whatever you want to do. Enter those expenses on your advertising tab. You also will see that you have shipping label expenses or maybe you do maybe you don't but if you do that would go under your postage expense tab. So what I would do is say okay I'm gonna make it be January and I'm gonna say I have $45.94 of uh, Etsy um, 
shipping label expense. I think I would enter that vendor as the post office, really. I don't know. Maybe Etsy. Whatever feels right for you. And then I'm just going to say that that's my Etsy shipping labels. My payment source would be, you know, PayPal or your Visa or whatever. And then you can put whatever other info you want. Just um, to point out that this summary box has a lot of useful expenses that you might need to enter. Okay, so we've covered Etsy listings and transaction fees. We've already imported our Etsy direct checkout percentage. Now let's talk about your PayPal fees. Um, this may or may not apply to you, especially now that Etsy has switched over everything to being via direct checkout. Um, but if you do have, uh, if you do accept payments via PayPal, excluding your direct checkout percentage, then you may be paying a commission to PayPal. So if you need to enter some PayPal transaction fees into your spreadsheet, you can log into your PayPal account. This is only going to work if you have a business PayPal account, which I highly recommend you convert to if you're using a personal account. It's free and easy to do, and you get a lot more um, reporting tools if you're using a business account. Anyway, you'll navigate to reports up here, and then you can click your financial summaries and then go to monthly financial summary. Then let's say we wanna look at our January 2015. You'll pick whatever month you wanna look at. You go to view report, and this nice little report will pop up for you. Um, it'll tell you several useful things, but the first one that I want to talk about is the amount showing up on this fees line. So I paid $11.92 for PayPal fees in the month of January 2015. I'm going to take that amount, $11.92, and I'm going to enter it, remember, as a positive amount on my Peach PayPal line. Now... Just like with your Etsy bill, you might need to look at this report to see um, if you have any other information here that you need to enter. If you take payment via PayPal, not from Etsy, like if you have your own standalone site or you invoice customers independently through PayPal, you will look at this sales activity line and you might need to um, enter some of this. Now, if you take sales via Etsy as well, there might be Etsy sales that you've already entered from your import file um, included in this amount. So if you need to look at uh, more detail to figure out if you have any non-Etsy sales included in this amount that you need to enter, you can click on it. And PayPal is going to give you a line-by-line -line, um, breakdown of where these payments came from. So if you notice some payments that are from non-Etsy sources, you'll want to go ahead and type those in um, as one of your custom income lines in the month that it applies to. Now, you might also use PayPal to print shipping labels. If that's the case, then you can go back and look at the same report And you will just scroll down to where you see purchase activity. Um, and same thing, you can click on that amount for more detail. And if you have um, purchases for postage, you will see USPS as the business recipient here. Okay, so if you have a postage amount, then you can enter that on your yellow postage tab over here as well. Okay, so now that I've talked about how to enter a few of these special selling expenses here, I'm going to talk about all the rest of um, the expense categories that we've got and how to enter those, which is pretty straightforward. Keep in mind that you've got a couple of custom lines here. So if you sell on like Amazon or some other venue as well and you have listing fees for that venue, you can enter those here. 
and then you've got your product expenses and your business expenses and a few custom lines for your business expenses, not to mention the fact that you have another tab here where you can enter miscellaneous stuff. So I've got uh, a few of the most popular expense categories here. For all these expenses, you should just go through um, weekly, preferably, if not monthly, and enter your receipts into these tabs. Um, so the first step is just to determine which tab the expense applies to. If it doesn't have um, an obvious home on one of these choices, you can either enter it on the other tab or as a custom expense line. Um, once you choose a tab to enter it on, you'll want to enter the date and it needs to be in this format, numerical format with um, forward slashes for the spreadsheet to work correctly. You'll enter the dollar amount, um, the vendor, a description if you want to, the source if you have multiple, multiple ways of paying for things just to make um, backing up that expense a little easier and um, an other column if there's some other type of info that you'd like to track. Um, and that's pretty much it for entering your expenses. It's pretty straightforward. Now, one of the helpful things about this expense, these expense tabs, all of them do it. Um, it. It'll be even more helpful once you have, you know, lots and lots of data here. But you can sort and filter on these expense tabs. In order to do that, you would just use the um, any of the drop-down arrows right here. So if you wanted to um, sort, that would that shows your data in a certain order according to the input that you put in. So let's say I'm going to sort by vendor. Okay, so now I've got all my vendors, all my expenses in alphabetical order by vendor. Or let's say I want to filter. That means I only want to see certain data. So let's say I only want to see everything that I paid for Facebook advertising. So I'm going to filter to see only my Facebook advertising expenses. Okay, so now I can easily see where my expenses are going um, and how much I'm paying for them. And I can mess around with the data to be most helpful with me, for me. Um, okay, so if I want to undo a filter, I can just hit clear filter, and now I get all my data back. And I'm going to keep things in chronological order, because that's just what makes most sense to me. But that's something cool that you can do with the data that you enter on your expense tabs. I have a lot of really important um, notes about entering your expenses and categorizing your expenses on the PDF instructions for this spreadsheet that I encourage you to read. I'm not going to read them out loud to you in the video series because you can read them, but um, make sure to check that out. So that's it for dealing with your expenses on the Etsy seller spreadsheet. Um, check out the next video, which is gonna be all about how to use your sales tax tab. Thank you.